Ammonia, the shape of trigonal pyramid. Nitrogen will be present in the apex of the pyramid. Whereas the three hydrogens will be present in the three corners of the triangular base. The C3 axis in ammonia passes through the nitrogen atom like this. When you say C3 axis, the rotation about 120 degrees will produce an equivalent appearance. And during a complete rotation of 360 degrees, the equivalent appearance will be produced three times. The C3 axis passes through the nitrogen atom. This is the same structure of ammonia. The pyramids in a slightly different manner. One of the NH bonds is straight in the front of your eyes. There will be one NH bond to the left and one NH bond to the right. And uh, there will be a plane that contains the NH bond. The NH bond is contained in the plane and uh, it is the sigma V. It is the sigma V. Sigma V means the vertical plane of symmetry. Vertical plane of symmetry. When you say vertical plane of symmetry, what we mean is the principal axis, C3 axis, passes through nitrogen. That is what we saw previously in the previous screen. And uh, there is only axis, and so there is a principal axis. And this plane contains the principal axis. And the plane containing the principal axis is known as vertical plane of symmetry. And so this is a vertical plane of symmetry. And uh, this bifurcates the two NH bonds. These are the two NH bonds that are present. This is one bond. This is one bond. And uh, this plane bifurcates the two NH bonds. And there are three such NH bonds. And so there will be a plane containing each of these three NH bonds. And so there will be totally three sigma V planes passing through three NH bonds. So the symmetry elements present in ammonia are E, C3 and three sigma V. Boron trifluoride has a trigonal planar structure. Boron is the center of the triangle and the three fluorine atoms occupy three corners of the triangular plane. You will find axis of symmetry passing through the boron atom perpendicular to the molecular plane which contains the boron and three fluorine atoms. And so this is an axis which is perpendicular to the molecular plane passing only through boron atom. During rotation about this axis every 120 degrees you will find an equivalent appearance and during a complete rotation of 360 degrees the equivalence of rotation equivalent appearances will be obtained three times and so it is a C3 axis. The C3 axis passes through boron atom and it is perpendicular to the molecular plane. Apart from this, there will be an axis of rotation passing through boron fluorine bond present in the molecular plane which is C2 axis. When during rotation about the C2 axis through 180 degrees, the atoms that are present in the axis will not shift. The C2 axis bifurcates the two BF bonds and uh, the two fluorine atoms will get interchanged during rotation. For each BF bond, there will be a C2 axis and so 
you will find 3 C2 axis passing through 3 BF bonds present in boron trifluoride. This 3 C2 axis will be perpendicular to the C3 axis which passes through the boron atom and which is perpendicular to the molecular plane. Next we have a plane of symmetry containing boron fluorine bond. This plane of symmetry bifurcates bifurcates the two boron fluoride bonds. One BF bond is contained in the plane one BF bond is contained left of the plane other BF bond is containing right of the plane the C3 axis is perpendicular to the plane and passing through boron atom and so the plane contains the principal axis which is the C3 axis and so this is sigma V plane vertical plane of symmetry and for each BF bond there will be one sigma v plane which is perpendicular to the molecular plane and so there will be three sigma v planes passing through three bf bonds and they will be perpendicular to the molecular plane. Apart from this C3 is the principal axis and uh, the mo there is a plane containing the molecular plane containing all the atoms present in the molecule which is perpendicular to the principal axis this is the principal axis and there is a plane that is perpendicular to the principal axis this is an horizontal plane because it is perpendicular to the principal axis and this is a sigma h present in BCL3 to summarize the sigma h atom plane is present in the molecular plane and is perpendicular to the principal axis. Finally, we have all these things added together. We have E, C3, 3C2 perpendicular to C3, 3 sigma V and sigma H. These are the symmetry elements of boron trifluoride. Carbon dioxide is a symmetric linear molecule as shown here. And uh, if you imagine the center of the molecule and from the center of molecule if you draw a line in one direction it meets oxygen atom and if you draw another line of the same magnitude in the opposite direction once again you get an uh, oxygen atom and so carbon dioxide contains center of symmetry. In carbon dioxide there will be an axis of symmetry which is a C2 axis of symmetry which is passing through a carbon atom which is perpendicular to the bond axis this is the bond axis the C2 axis passes through the carbon atom and perpendicular to the bond axis because it is a C2 axis during rotation about 180 degrees this oxygen will be shifted here and uh, this oxygen will be shifted here. There will be an interchange of oxygen atoms. There will be infinite such C2 axis. C2 axis is passing through carbon atom in the molecular plane. It is perpendicular to the bond axis and there will be infinite C2. There will be another axis which is passing along the bond axis. This is known as C infinity axis because during complete rotation all the three atoms are present in the axis itself. That is the carbon and two oxygen atoms are present in the axis itself. And since they are present in the axis itself during rotation they will not change their positions. So, you will get an equivalent appearance at any moment 
So during complete rotation of 360 degrees, there will be infinite such appearances. And so the axis is known as C infinity. C infinity is passing through the bond axis, whereas C2 is perpendicular to the bond axis. C infinity is the principal axis. C infinity is the imagined line passing through all the atoms in the molecular plane. C infinity is the principal axis. This is a plane of symmetry which contains the principal axis C infinity. Since it contains the principal axis C infinity, this is a sigma V plane. But we have how many sigma V planes? We have infinite sigma V planes. How do we get to those infinite sigma V planes? The sigma V planes cut each and every atom one portion of the atom is above the plane and one portion of the atom is below the plane. One portion of each atom is above the plane and one portion of each atom is below the plane. And the atoms are spherical in nature. So we will have different planes like this which contain C infinity and so which are all sigma V planes and that is how you get infinite sigma V planes. Next we have a plane which is perpendicular to the principal axis. The principal axis is C infinity. This plane is perpendicular to the principal axis. And so this is sigma h, horizontal plane of symmetry. To the left of it you find oxygen and to the right of it you find another oxygen. During reflection the carbon will not change its position because it is contained in the plane the two oxygen atoms will get interchanged during reflection about sigma h. To summarize the symmetry elements they will be present in huge numbers in the case of d infinity h which is a point group of CO2 the major important symmetry elements are C infinity, C2. Of course, we have infinite C2. Here I have written as n sigma v. It is not n sigma v. It is infinite sigma v. Infinite C2. And we have infinite sigma v. Sigma h and Sn. Sn is an axis which depends upon the principal axis and the plane perpendicular to it. And so it will be mainly S infinity. These are the symmetry elements of carbon dioxide. The major symmetry elements E, C infinity, infinite C2, infinite sigma V, sigma H and Sn. In today's lecture, we have taken three different examples. One is a non-planar molecule, which is ammonia, trigonal pyramidal in shape. The second one is a planar molecule, which is BC BF3 or BCL3 which is trigonal planar in shape. The third one is the carbon dioxide which is a symmetric linear molecule and we have learnt about the symmetry elements present in these molecules. Thank you.